Well, good evening guys. So, we are walking in the dark because we are going to go and photograph some straw bales in a field. The moon's up, it's actually got a bit clearer now. It's lost the red. <laughs> um, it's a bit high, so I might have to bring the moon back down. But basically, um, I was hoping the moon was going to be bright enough to give us some shadows on the bales. But we shall see. Um, we shall uh, walk into the field and have a look. But, uh, you see there, you can't see bugger all when you're walking along. So back to me. Um, so this is the Pocket 3 on low light. I mean, the screen's lighting me up basically which is handy, I suppose, in this situation. Well, it's completely dark. So the low light's um, quite handy. So... There we go, into the, the darkness there. You can see the moon through the clouds. Um, got the A1 with me and the Sigma 35mm f1.2. Major advantage with that is obviously it lets a lot of light in. So we can uh, see in the dark. Oh, bat. Don't know if you'd be able to see that if I aimed it at the moon, but who knows? I'm just trying to find the... Um, there's me. Walk through here in the dark using the screen, so you're probably looking at the sky right now. <laughs> um. Oh, spider web. But anyway, we <laughs> have some bales. Actually, that's not going to look too bad, actually. Oh, crikey. So, what do we go for? I guess we go for this one here. As long as don't fall down a hole. We'll be alright. There's the moon. In fact, there's two quite close together here. up back on me for a moment you can sit on top of a bale hopefully it don't fall down seems pretty sturdy I might have to boost the exposure but um, we shall see anyway the moon was very red the sun was very red I managed to get a cool shot of the sun before it um, disappeared. So anyway, uh, what we got? One more length. So now my eyes are adjusting. It's quite cool. Anyway, we're going to um, set up the camera and um, hopefully see the bales and it may cast a shadow. Who knows? Not really sure. Anyway, you can hear me at least. So let's get the camera. Onto the uh, tripod there, which now it is. Okay. Single shot. And we're a bit close. But I can see you guys quite easily. I'm going to go over to the side slightly, so we've got a bit of a side, yeah, side shot of the bale and the moon. Same thing with 35mm, you don't get a huge amount of... Unless I'm in crop mode, no. Right? Okay. 
There we go. So we're up at 12,800 for some reason, but cool thing is we can see like it's daytime. Let's grab the camera. Hello. So if I turn the camera around, basically you can see that, can't you? Which is what it is. Um, if I aim down to the screen of the camera here, there we go. And that's what I'm seeing at the moment. And with bright monitoring, I can pretty much see like it's daytime compared to that. <laughs> there we go. So it's a fantastic tool. I can compose shots in the complete darkness with no torch, nothing. And basically set my shot up and um, don't have to worry too much. Obviously you can adjust your exposure to a point but when there's no light at all it's amazing how it can actually do it it's if there was no moon there it would make a huge difference um, in how dark it is but yeah it's a fun night out i love nights like this it's calm can't even hear any animals bit of water rushing down further down the, the um Thing there however exposed is my shot it's not um, and we have got a little bit of shadowing so that's quite good I'll show you the pictures There's no point showing you on the screen because it doesn't give you a real thing so that's uh, I'm gonna actually stop it down a bit give us a bit of f5.6 action up the ISO slightly. Let's see what goes. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, what a this field. This field won't be here very long. Um, but I'll film it in a minute with this um, with the uh, A1. I'll set the exposure correct for filming, and I'll be able to I'll do a panning shot around the field so you can see what the field's like. With the 35 mil, there, it's obviously not a massive viewing angle. But we've got f1.2, so it's quite usable in low light. And uh, it's pretty cool, to be fair. So, yeah, what a difference. So I've taken three shots so far. One at f1.2, um, ISO 100, and then another one at f5.6, ISO 320. And now I've just opened it back up to f1.2 just to see how brightness gets. I changed my white balance as well, just to try and match the color of the moon a little bit, just out of interest. So yeah, anyway, I'll come back shortly. All right, here we go. So we are gonna do a little bit of light painting around the bale of hay here, or straw rather, that you can't see. Here we go. And we're gonna go round a few times and then disappear behind like so, casting a bit of light across the field and the other way and then off and then walk back to the camera that's still probably taking a picture 30 seconds isn't particularly long oh it's done already there we go, so that's how you do it I blew that one out because I was on oh that looks a bit like ghostly actually Let's try that again, but I need to do it on the lower setting. It still looks quite cool though, as it goes. That's pretty mad. Right. Here we go. As we run over, give myself a little bit more time and expose the shot there. Three times. Pull it out behind, just to cast a shadow. Over that way somewhere. And then off, and then walk back here. 
So this is what it's like, you, you sort of take a few shots and slowly perfect it, you hope. <laughs> there we go, end of the shot. That's pretty cool to be fair. I'm not really in it, which is good. That's pretty cool. With this, the moon going up. Um, okay. What we're gonna do now. Um, go into bulb and we're going to shoot f5.6 bulb and we're going to give it a bit longer so it means I can mess around a bit got a remote somewhere I pre focus on the, the bale itself earlier which we can just double check again to be fair we are sharp right so go back to low why is that not shooting bulb oh hang on are we still in that sounded they were mechanical there we go i think we're shooting so now we can just leave it as is, or just leave it to catch us some light and it'll just look crazy. Or I'm going to actually fire some light from here to really give us some shadows on that lower section there. And then cast a bit of light that way. And then come in now and then we're gonna go like that a few times and then light it sideways probably gonna show this little bugger off somewhere over here somewhere and then see what happened there that was weird why it wouldn't lock bulb without a, sh uh, without a timer finished so to be fair that's not <laughs> not too bad it just shows you how much light you lose because the sky looks cool it looks very dark apart from where I've lit um, and the squiggle and everything I won't bother with a squiggle but I can so how long do I 73 seconds so that's fine. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. So, we shall do this one straight away. Go around there a few times. Gives me my circle of fire. Which I always think looks quite cool. Like that. So I was going to say, could you do this with the RX-10? You can do it with the RX-10. Um, you'd need a torch to just pre-focus it. Um, other than that, it will probably do quite a good job, to be fair. Um, keep it down at ISO 100. There we go. Now we're going to cast some light. Give us a shadow. A little bit more light, like so. And I really want to just punch a bit on the Thing itself like that three little pulses and I'd say we've been going a while 
There we go. Oh, not bad at all, actually. Apart from the bit where I came off it a little bit. Then we've got a plane or something going past. But no light really in, into the field. So what we'll do is we'll open it back up again. Which really shallow depths, gives you shallow depth of field. We're going to move to the left. To the left, to the left. Um, we're going to go 30 seconds. Okay, back into electronic shutter because I don't really want to wear the shutter mechanism out. Not that it will, but keeps your value in the camera. There we go. So I'm going to do one with no light added lighting at all. And um, another one with. So I'll just do 30 seconds. Lucky the moon's not really moving a huge amount. I think what I'll do then, I'm going to light it from the side. Yeah, light the whole field slightly. Give it a little bit of light on there, which won't take much. Off into the distance. A little bit of light onto the ground. No, it probably reloads because of the aperture. Even though I'm at ISO 100, it's um, not going to take much to overexpose. So this all is experimentation. You've got to absolutely love what you're doing. Um, yeah, blown it out slightly. But you'd be surprised what can pull back. But we have got shadowing, which is nice. I've lit the whole field up, <laughs> um, which is mad. To be you, that's probably savable, to be fair. Um, let's stop down a little bit. If I'm going to light that up, let's go f2.8. Do the same again. I'm just, uh, I've got a lower power this time. Give that a little bit of light down there, but not as much. Give it a bit more. There you go. And then um, go from there, really. Shows how much time I can waste. 11 minutes 32. Chatting crap while I'm doing this. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all, actually. The bales look a nice colour. The light's quite subtle into the distance, into the shadows. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else can we do? That's the question. Oh, right, guys. So, -ha 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 -ha. um. Basically, I've done a few shots. It is a little bit limited out here uh, on my own. Um, a little bit difficult, but pretty fun still. Got a few shots, a little bit limited, like I say. Uh, like I said, you could use the A6700. You could use any camera for this pretty much if you can do a long exposure, say 30 seconds or more. Uh, you can do a lot shorter. Ideally, you need a fastish lens to get the light in a little bit quicker. Um, but at the same time, if you've got a bulb, or you can turn the ISO up, which I might do now, just briefly take one. So I'm shooting at f4, and we're going to turn the ISO up to about 6400 ISO. Take a long exposure, which means the sky is going to be a lot brighter. And because I've got no light now down on the... Um, on the ground as such, or on the bales or anything like that, you, you, it, it'll balance for that probably, but I expect the moon will now overexpose everything. Be interesting to see anyway. But it's just a case of experimentation. This is what a lot of people don't get nowadays. Everybody wants it now. 
Right, so I think the, the key of everything in photography is practice. No, we know nothing is perfect and we know that art itself is very subjective to each person. So someone might like this photo I've just taken, someone might hate it, someone might go, oh, but I don't like the colours or don't like the way you've um, positioned the camera. There's all that sort of stuff involved, which is totally natural, totally understandable. It's like everything in life. Some people like this, some people like that. That's it. That's no problem whatsoever. So you can never take anything too serious in that situation. But the people who love them, that's the people you want to listen to. There might be some criticism, constructive criticism. Oh, you could have done this or you could have done that. Absolutely true. Um, so take that on board. So if anybody gives you some little bit of advice, you can either take it with a pinch of salt if it's not what you like, but if it's something that makes sense, it may actually be very, very helpful to you. And I think the world today, unfortunately, with all the AI crap and all the auto this and auto that, and the, yeah, I mean, the autofocus and everything like that's been massively improved, but photography is still photography. And at the end of the day, we have light, we have dark, we have lenses, we have cameras with sensors, and to be able to create, create something that is awesome in many, many different ways, from being out here in the dark to an air show to photographing the moon, the sunset, photographing people, sports, cars, um, underwater stuff, uh, the list goes on, macro um, and more. A lot of people today have got into this habit of asking questions on Facebook or whatever in groups, which I don't think is really bad, but when it's stupid questions and someone says, oh, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but well, there is, especially when you can't be bothered to actually experiment yourself and actually teach yourself and learn from your mistakes. I could tell you how many, you know, how many seconds I've photographed this and how many seconds I've photographed that, how long my, you know, what aperture I was using. Absolutely, that's going to work. But in a different situation, if that moon wasn't up, my exposure would be completely different anyway. If the moon was brighter tonight, my exposure would be different. It's not particularly bright tonight because it's stuck behind a load of um, sort of misty, hazy stuff. So as much as reading someone's settings and this, that and the other, it's all about learning techniques, learning what you like as well. Because if you don't enjoy doing sports, but you might enjoy doing landscape or, you know, portraiture or whatever, you've got to find your niche as such or find the way you would like and enjoy. That's one important thing. Um, but practice, get out, experiment, go out, dive in the deep end. I'm out here in the dark with a torch and a camera, messing around, experimenting, not really knowing what I'm going to get. I'm trying, I've done a few different shots with the, the light painting and everything like that. And I think doing this is the best way of doing it because that way you're going to one, learn by doing and remember by doing, because that's the most important thing as well. You, you basically becomes muscle memory, doesn't it? You remember your settings, you remember how you did it last, and you can improve every single time you go out uh, compared to just reading something, what someone's written on Facebook. You know, it's very, very different to reading a number or a couple of settings or whatever, and then going out going, oh, how do they do that again? And then not really understanding. So the basics of photography are the same. It doesn't matter what camera you're using. It could be your phone through to a high end, whatever. Um, obviously lenses are different, your settings are gonna be different and your scenery or your situation you're in is gonna be very different every single time. So I wouldn't rely too much on people's settings and stuff in from Facebook and places like that. Yes, it can help you, like for an air show, for example, say, oh, what are you shooting at? And then be like, oh, well, to get the propeller, propeller blur, when I'm panning with a Spitfire, for example, I want it down at about one two hundredth of a second. But depending on how bright the day is, what, what's my aperture going to be? What's my ISO going to be? Don't know. Am I going to use an ND filter? So it's all, like I said, that's just one small example. And that's why photography is such a broad um, area or broad experience, you know, of... Uh, creating, uh, creating sort of uh, situation. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but um, 
you've got to learn, you've got to experiment. And I think that's the biggest problem today is a lot of people don't really want to experiment. They just want to be able to put it in, push the button and take a picture and hope it comes out right. You can't rely on AI. AI doesn't know what you're trying to think. AI helps with the capturing the eye, you know, keeping your eye in, fo the eye in focus and stuff like that. Brilliant, that's really helpful um, in certain situations. But the fact that it doesn't know right now, I'm in fully manual, I've gone over and I've lit a straw bale with a torch. It doesn't know I'm going to do that. So AI has, it has its things. AI is also very inaccurate uh, in a lot of situations. So trying to keep photography real is what I keep saying. Is getting out there and doing it for you and doing it, you know, you doing it rather than a computer doing it. Obviously, we've got these cameras are amazing. They're full of computers and everything like that. But get it in manual, experiment, and actually capture something that you can be proud of and actually go, I did that. I didn't let the computer do that. It's a bit like when you see gamers gaming and you see the real gamers gaming. They don't cheat. They don't ever do anything um, you know, bad at all like that. But then you see the other gamers who are using cheat controllers and cheat codes and all this sort of stuff. And then, you know, you can't, you can't beat them, but they're cheating. So what satisfaction are they actually getting out of it? And that's one thing I'm out here, actually loving life. I'm stood in a field in the dark. <laughs> it's peace and quiet, apart from one plane that's flying over somewhere. Um, you know, just being creative and trying to capture something that's cool. And, you know, that's one thing I'm you know, just trying to say is that, you know, photography or videography or whatever creative medium you want to do if you're painting, obviously it's quite difficult to paint in the dark, but, um, you know, photography, for example, is relaxing. You know, you can do stuff like this. I'm stood out in the field. If I had a mate with me and he was doing a similar thing, you know, it'd be quite nice. You can have a chat away in the evening, but obviously I'm out here on my own, you know, but I'm still enjoying it. And I think that's the most, one of the most important things. Do it because you love it. Um, and just push yourself, learn the basics, get more advanced, and you'll actually find it easier and easier and easier to actually adjust the camera. You'll learn all the buttons properly and you know, you'll know you um, become a much better photographer, not relying on, um, on the automatic stuff, you know, or relying on people trying to tell you what to do. And there's, you know, obviously you always get conflicting answers as well and also people taking the piss which I've been guilty of because sometimes it's funny but you know it's yeah it is what it is anyway I'm gonna go home I'm gonna have a look at these pictures and we shall see what actually how, how they actually look and we'll do a little bit of editing as well because we're gonna have to tweak a couple definitely but I just want to show you how how you progress through an image so even though I've moved the camera a couple of times haven't really moved it very much so I've taken quite a few shots and obviously done the lighting differently and stuff like that. Light painting is just great fun. And the fact that you've got bright monitoring on the Sony's, you can see in the dark to compose your shot. You don't really need a torch. Um, you can utilize the torch obviously to use the autofocus uh, just to help you find focus on whatever you're doing. And that's it. And you can just mess around and see what happens. Brilliant thing about digital is it costs nothing once you've done it, once you've got the cameras and uh, you can be out here snapping away all night with no drama whatsoever compared to when I first started in film we used to go out and do stuff like this with film but you'd never know what you got you didn't know if you got it right you didn't know if you've got 24 or 36 shots of crap or did you get one that was really cool you just didn't know so and it was much more expensive obviously in the long run because you'd be paying for printing and um, exposures and uh, processing and stuff so anyway I'm out of here see you soon